ACS Central Braha, esteemed partners, management and staff, friends from the media, ladies and gentlemen, a very good afternoon to everyone. Welcome to the signing ceremony of the development agreement between AW Malaysia Central Braha and a great American brand international. My name is Martin and I will be the MC for the day. It's great to see spreading its fame quickly since 1963. Following the change of hands of this iconic brand from KUB Malaysia Berhad to Intermark Resources Sendran Berhad in September 2018, ANW has been an, on an accelerated journey to chart a new course in Malaysia aimed at satisfying young, savvy and sophisticated customers. Currently, there are 49 ANW outlets in Peninsular Malaysia, and with this development signing ceremony, it is set to increase the number of locations nationwide to 124 within the next five years. And uh, it's, this is one of the maybe the last event in this place because we actually just to explain a bit of history, we are actually on a month-to-month -month basis rental here. A lot of people I meet here always ask me, hey, when are we closing down? Because I heard that we, we may close this all down. That is, and that is why we, we had an event today. So we want to make use of whatever time we have here. Uh, if the economy is not so good next uh, this year, maybe the developer won't take over the land and build this hotel yet. Much older than me, way before I was here. And my memories of this restaurant was, uh, every time my birthday, I get to come here once a year. And that was in 1980s, many, many years ago. So I think a lot of people have great memories here, right? Um, we have taken over ANW Malaysia about one year, three months ago, and there has been many things that we have done. When we took over, it was 34 restaurants. Today, we have higher than what, what we signed. <laughs> so um, I'm very excited. What we have done is also we have changed, we have streamlined the menu, we have improved the product. One of the things we did uh, in the early early days when I took over was to change frozen chicken to fried chicken. So if you have not eaten the a and fried chicken yet, you have to try it. It's much better than the other one. Um, we when, 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 when The year we took over, the uh, 2018 sales was 70 million revenue. Uh, last year, we closed at 90 million. We expect to close sales at 120 million next year. Uh, this year, to open another seven two restaurant for the next five years, but in two zero two zero this year itself, we are planning to open twenty more new restaurant. We are allocating about twenty two million ringgit to open. I think our plan is to almost have one and a half new restaurant every month. So it's a very busy time for the for the team. We have a brand that has hundred percent brand awareness equity in Malaysia, right? Everybody knows. A and W. Some may feel that hey, where is the latest A and W? Or, or I haven't seen it so much. But everyone actually in Malaysia just uh, yesterday flew in all the way to witness this occasion with us. Uh, I wish to thank Makasi for joining us today for this momentous and joyous occasion. Um, that I'm not new to Malaysia, although I just came on this visit uh, yesterday. I, I actually lived here in Malaysia from 1988 to 1995. My daughter, who today is 36 years old, enjoyed her fourth birthday party here in PJDI in this very room, 32 years ago. Uh, here, what I consider my second home, in fact, in 1990, your Prime Minister announced Wawasan 2020. And so to be back here in 2020 and to see the development of this country and what has happened uh, over the past 30 years is, is nothing short of amazing. Uh, not perfect, but nothing is. But I think that vision that your Prime Minister had 30 years ago has come to fruition as I see the development uh, and has brought this household brand for quick service restaurants here in Malaysia. Today, 
I return in my capacity as CEO, global CEO for a &W Restaurants, and consultant tasked to oversee the long-term development and to accelerate the growth of a and not only in the U.S., but here in Malaysia and throughout ASEAN region as well. Globally, our business has increased. Uh, we got current ownership acquired this business about eight years ago, and over the eight years, our business has grown over 37 percent since we acquired it in 2011, and we have almost a thousand locations uh, worldwide. Uh, a and W Restaurants will continue to open restaurants. We'll open 50 or 60 restaurants in the coming year. hand signals from the back of the room. <laughs> um, and as George said earlier, we intend over the next five years with the signing of this development agreement to open an additional 75 locations here in Malaysia to become really the third largest QSR concept here in Malaysia. Last year in 19, uh, 2019, we achieved a milestone in becoming the first QSR brand to achieve 100 years. So 100. <laughs> and uh, in June of last year, and I'm proud to say that A&W is the first fast food here in Malaysia opening in 1963. Hence, today's signing of the development agreement between a &W Malaysia and a great American brand international, which represents the a &W restaurants uh, here in uh, International Division, is yet another significant milestone for a &W restaurants. This agreement paves the way for us to expand the a and brand and enlarge our footprint across the peninsula of Malaysia. I'm proud to see a and Malaysia has conceptualized plans to leverage on its rich heritage and legacy in Malaysia for a successful comeback. A lot of investment has already been made by Mr. Ong and the team to create the infrastructure in which now to accelerate the growth. Very, very appreciative of that, my friend. We see that the consumer affinity towards a and is very strong in Malaysia, as George mentioned, we have virtually 100% brand recognition here in Malaysia, and we intend to open up outlets so that people are where it's more accessible to the population than, than we have been in, in the past number of years. With the establishment of the International Training Center and Product Development Facility in Singapore, uh, we just, after an absence of 16 years, uh, we re-entered the Singapore market uh, last year with our first two locations and the response from the consumer in Singapore has been very, very, very strong. We're very grateful for that, uh, but uh, we have developed a training center there, training facility there, a product development facility there. Uh, so the consumers can rest assured that service delivery standards of all a outlets in Malaysia and throughout the region will be on par with global standards of a and restaurants. This is our commitment not to just grow in numbers globally, but to enhance our offerings and boost our service standards. For this very exciting journey. Yeah. She could be here. Unfortunately, had some other uh, events already scheduled today, but um, you know, I think as we were talking about it on the way over, we were, we were all sharing stories of a and w from our time growing up and, and what we remember about hot summer days so really a pleasure to be here to see the expansion that george you and your team are, are taking to this great brand and it also gives me a chance i think to really underscore uh the relationship the business relationship between the united states and malaysia that just continues to grow continues to thrive and to see uh a and W, as well as all the other great American brands uh, that are represented in this economy, 
Uh, it, it's, a, it's a feeling of pride as an American for sure, but it's also a great feeling of affinity to know that those brands that we appreciate as Americans are also appreciated by our Malaysian friends and knowing this is something we can share um, as part of our uh, societies together. Um, both George and Kevin have talked about a lot of the you know, specific details of what's coming up, the number of uh, outlets to be expanded, the kind of investment that's going to be necessary. I think the other piece that's so great about what's happening, and if, if you've read some of uh, George's interviews with, uh, with uh, different outlets about what his goals are and what he wants to achieve uh, with this, it's another great story about American companies and the relationships that come from franchising and uh, co-investment and things like that, and that is the skill building and the ability to look at markets and say, what do they need? How do we adapt? How do we bring what is going to be useful to both the company and the society uh, into the marketplace? And so I'm really excited to see where you guys take that over the next few years. Uh, I wish you nothing but the best. Uh, I think this is a great endeavor. I appreciate very much having a chance to come and be part of it. Uh, and we look forward to sharing in, in more of that success in the years ahead. Thanks for having me. The signed documents. All right. Gentlemen, please exchange the signed documents and seal the agreement with a symbolic handshake. <laughs> With a great American brand in the Star Wars music as well. Long standing presence in this country, right? Uh, is there, is your, is your company planning to uh, use Malaysia as a sort of platform to expand into the rest of the Southeast Asian market, particularly those without a AW presence or a very limited one? Uh, the answer to that is yes. Um, yeah, the answer to that is yes. So, very good question and thank you. For the next question, could you just raise your hand so that we can pass on the mic? Sure. Go ahead. Uh, Mr. Thompson. Uh, regarding uh, your speech, I'd like to ask, um, you know, given the fact that uh, a and is planning to expand the operations in Malaysia, is this also indicative of uh, increased or renewed interest by American uh, corporations or companies in, in expanding, in, in further investing in this part of the world? Oh, I think absolutely. Um, and uh, I, I, don't, I also don't even know if I would characterize it as increased or expanding. It's, it's, a, it's a constant, uh, at least what I've seen over the last few years, uh, for companies that want to be in the ASEAN space, in the Southeast Asia space, Malaysia is a critical part of that and has done a great job of, of reaching out, of looking for connections that can be made. Uh, Groups like the American Chamber of Commerce uh, have been really uh, pushing uh, the idea of partnerships between Malaysian and American companies. And through the uh, through the embassy, we're you know always looking at how we can be supportive of the U.S. brands uh, that are coming out of the region. So I think absolutely, there's a lot of interest. We've recently seen uh, statistics about uh, America. Uh, American uh, investment in Malaysia uh, leading the way, and we hope to see that continue. We can still contribute a lot to uh, the society. And we, we I, I recently read, I'm not sure it's true or not, in Facebook that the most productive people are 60 to 70. I'll send a notice to my dad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I agree with that. <laughs> Emirates and from the edge. Um, question to you, Mr. Ah. Um, when KUB sold the franchise to your organization, um, does that include the ownership of this property? Um, and if not, or yes or no? Um, Unfortunately, no. Uh, we just bought the a and brand and business and all the stores, but most of the stores are on lease. So this 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 outlet is also on lease. They actually KUB actually sold the land as well after they sold us the the, the brand. 
So I, I think it's in the papers. They, they sold it for 37 million. Of the land as well. Yeah. So do you have any plans? Uh, we, we are on month to month. I think I explained that we are on month to month lease now. Uh, so the last time I checked with the developer, they are saying that they may take it back maybe uh, middle or end of the year for their new project. Yeah, because the last I heard from KUB was that they had a plan for to develop this land, this yeah. property. Uh, is that still on the No, KUB sold the land. They sold the land to a developer. That developer will now uh, develop it into their own commercial project. So, what's the impacts like for the next five years into 2024? As you see, if you look at the development plan, every year we are looking at about 20 to 22 restaurants, so about 20 to 22 million each year. One restaurant costs about 1 to 1.2 million. The, the, the culture today is uh, driving has not been relevant for a while but uh, we are we are opening a few more outlets around this area we are opening one in section 17 in a few months time so we will we'll have more outlets in pj definitely and what what will happen to this this outlet once you move away people are used so used to coming to here uh, location here definitely we'll we'll love to open uh, i i think it's 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 very nostalgic uh, like as you speak, you almost want to cry. Already. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I know, I know the feeling. But uh, we are also we, we also want to build another very nice retro looking big outlet like this. This is a real iconic outlet for all of us. You know, I, I had a I had a customer who came to me a few days ago here and said that what you're going to close this down? What who is the developer going to take? I'm going to protest. I'm going to. I'm going to hold a candlelight virgil here. <laughs> so, uh, you know, you have passionate people who who really think a lot about this outlet. And one, I'm, I'm sure you are. Okay, thank you. I'm sure.